the, the business model of higher education is fundamentally broken. We're not producing um, um, the kinds of, of, of educated young people that uh, we once did, and uh, that's a problem. But the even bigger problem, arguably, is that the, um, uh, the, the sustainability of the model in, in simple economic terms is, is just gone. That we're able to do more with less across almost all sectors in, in our economy. Higher education is an exception to that rule because we're still doing the same things in the same way we were doing them in the 15th century. We have not taken all the fruits of the revolutions, especially in information technology, and put them at the heart of our enterprise. And that means um, uh, bringing technology not just into the classroom, it's in the classroom now, but completely rethinking what the idea of a classroom is. Um, right now, all of American higher education, whether it's the law school or UNH in Durham or uh, uh, St. A's or any place, it's all essentially the same thing. It's a place-based, time-bound um, enterprise. It's incredibly labor-intensive, um, and uh, that's what makes it unsustainable. We have, however, not only the capacity now, but probably the, the urgency to throw out place, throw out time, throw out that labor intensity intensivity, uh, intensity, and uh, um, completely change the nature of what we do. But I bet that there are probably, given there are 4,000 universities, there have got to be at least 4,000 statistics courses, and probably more than that, because at UNH we teach a score of them in various departments. So there are probably 10 or 15,000 statistics courses out there. I'll bet there's at least one person out there who does a really good job teaching basic statistics. Why does there need to be more than one statistics course now in America? Seriously, why does there need to be more than one? We, we could take the, the greatest faculty member doing the greatest statistics course, which doesn't change a whole lot, frankly, put it on um, uh, some kind of medium that's available, accessible to anybody, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and free up all of that faculty time. Uh, it's now devoted to boring people with introductory statistics and turning them loose to work hand in hand with students on interesting research projects or uh, and other kinds of learning that are far richer and uh, uh, more meaningful for both faculty and student than that statistics course. Uh, I was reading the Chronicle uh, last year and I, 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 there was a, uh, a, an op-ed piece in there that really caught my attention. It was somebody who was making a similar point about low productivity in, in higher ed. And he pointed out that if you go back to the 1920s, um, and this is also kind of a Christian-esque insight, although we didn't, he didn't quote him. If you go back to the 1920s, the average American working family spent about um, uh, 10 hours a week to pay for its food budget. Now, uh, according to economists, the average American family spends maybe three or four hours a week to pay for its food budget. And the quality of food and the quality of nutrition has just gone off the charts since that time. But in higher education, what's happened? It's actually gone the other way. My, when, when I went to college, um, I, I had a, I've been going through my father's papers, uh, who passed away over the summer and cleaning out a lot of stuff, and I noticed um, as I looked at my own tuition bill from when I went to college in the late 1960s um, and compared it to his income at the time, it was, even though I put myself through college and, 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 and borrowed the money, my education represented less than 10% of his very meager income. Uh, now, the, at UNH, our, our all-in cost of attendance for an in-state student represents over 40% of the middle-class income of a New Hampshire family. And if you look out another 10 years and the, the trends continue to be where they are, we're looking at 60 to 70% of the income of a middle-class family in New Hampshire. That's not sustainable. It's a reflection of the fact that we haven't taken account of those productivity gains that everybody else has.